Smack in the middle of Europe, Switzerland is not a member of the European Union. But the two are close partners in trade. 80% of Swiss imports come from the EU, and 60% of Swiss exports are destined for the EU. Their first agreement on free trade was signed in 1972. Exactly 20 years later, Switzerland started membership negotiations with the EU. But when asked in December 1992 whether Switzerland should join the European Economic Area, a majority of voters and cantons said no. Switzerland had to suspend its membership negotiations and find a different way of ensuring that Swiss businesses would not be disadvantaged when trading with its neighbours. And so started the long and rocky road of negotiating what became known as the bilateral agreements. The first set of seven agreements, the Bilaterals I, was signed in June 1999 and approved by voters in 2000. The EU made it an all-or-nothing deal. Either the package as a whole was approved or not at all. The second set of nine agreements, Bilaterals II, was signed in 2004. Negotiations had been arduous, with the most contentious issue that of cooperation in the fields of justice, asylum and migration, the Schengen and Dublin agreements. This was the issue most likely to be put up for vote, should opponents of it call for a referendum, as indeed they did, arguing that Schengen opens doors to criminals and Dublin those to asylum seekers. The Schengen Agreement scraps routine border controls on individuals entering Switzerland from Schengen signatory states. The Dublin Agreement seeks to prevent asylum shopping by allowing asylum seekers to present their application in only one EU country. Before Dublin, if a person was rejected asylum in France, for example, he or she was able to reapply in non-EU member Switzerland. In terms of EU-related referendum results, 2005 ended up being a good year for the Swiss government. In June, voters approved membership of the Schengen-Dublin area. In September, they said yes to the free movement of people from the new EU states. Swiss cabinet ministers were visibly relieved that voters had approved issues with so much at stake. A no vote would have almost certainly led to a crisis with Brussels. At the same time, the government stressed that this yes vote had no effect on Switzerland's application for EU membership, on ICE, since 1992. The then President Samuel Schmid stated that the bilateral way, the path the government had chosen, had been confirmed as the right one. With this yes, voters have once again confirmed Switzerland's bilateral path as the right one and secured a good relationship to the expanded EU. That was in September 2005. And now? In a 2010 report, the Swiss government maintained its position that the bilateral path is the most viable one to date, from a foreign policy point of view, as well as in terms of domestic acceptance. However, it added that certain adjustments were needed, as continuing on the bilateral path had become more difficult. A report by the EU's 27 foreign ministers states... While the system of bilateral agreements has worked well in the past, the challenge of the coming years will be to go beyond this complex system, which is creating legal uncertainty and has become unwieldy to manage and has clearly reached its limits. Meaning? I think it means that it's become more difficult, first from an administrative point of view and also from an organizational and bureaucratic point of view. To take into account the interests of the European Union and fit into the Swiss political system. The EU wants Switzerland to automatically take over EU law in any new agreements. We think it's crucial to clarify these institutional questions, as they affect the single market. Once we've clarified that, then we're prepared to examine our relationship as a whole. We have agreed on an overall view of the situation. And we have agreed to further deepen this approach.
A new set of bilaterals would likely include institutional and tax-related aspects and updates to the current bilaterals. But in Switzerland, this is a delicate issue, and the Swiss political parties hold widely differing views on this. We don't want to be bound to the EU institutionally, otherwise we'd be a member. If there are problems, we have to find bilateral solutions, and at present that would only apply to a streamlined accord on electricity issues, where there's a mutual interest. But the Swiss People's Party has no interest in further bilateral agreements at the moment. I think the strategy of negotiating another package, the Bilaterals 3, is the right one in the short term. In the long term, we'll certainly have to speak again about joining the EU, because this bilateral path leads to massive loss of sovereignty, and at the end of the day, that's no position being a passive EU member.